Hey everyone, I'm Varun, the founder and CEO at Hammer Missions, and today in this video we'll explore the top five things to consider whilst inspecting solar farms with commercial drones. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel, and if you're watching this on YouTube, click the alert notification. Since modern commercial drones can cover large distances and capture high resolution images, many companies have been able to optimize time consuming inspection tasks. New technical developments have provided drone operators inspecting solar farms with accurate data and have enabled them to carry out routine operations and inspections much more efficiently. By using drones, you can not only cover large areas efficiently, but also conduct repeat inspections every few months in a safe and compliant manner. If you're planning to inspect solar farms with drones in the future, it's important to keep the following top five things in mind. First, let's look at the choosing the altitude and ground sampling distance correctly. It's important to keep in mind that when you arrive at the solar site, you should follow the standard inspection checklist and review all hardware thoroughly to confirm it meets the operating conditions. As you begin with the first flight of the solar inspection, you should confirm that all flight parameters are set up in the mission planning software of your choice correctly that there is sufficient irradiance, 600 watts per square meter for instance, and the ground sampling distance, commonly known as GSD, and overlaps are correctly set up. Two of the parameters to carefully consider are altitude and GSD. Choosing a lower altitude would mean a lower GSD and would result in high resolution photos. However, your flight might take overall longer on the other hand, flying at a high altitude would result in a safer and more efficient flight, but the captured images may not have sufficient detail required for the PV inspection. It's important in such situations to understand the requirements of your clients or stakeholders and make an informed decision on the site. If you want to learn more about ground sampling distance, please do check out our video. I've added it in the link of the description below. Remember, one potential solution is to conduct a high altitude overview flight with a visual RGB camera and then to perform a low altitude flight with a thermal camera for details. That way you're able to get both the overview as well as the detailed side of things. With Hammer Missions, our flight software, you can actually select mapping and solar inspection mission modes that we have specifically designed to get both the overview as well as the details in these flights. Another important factor to consider when inspecting solar farms is aligning the drone with the solar panel rows. When conducting a thermal power solar inspection, it's important to remember that sometimes it's necessary to get up and close to the panels due to the lower resolution of the thermal camera. By aligning the drone with the solar panel rows, you can capture the exact data you need at high resolution and minimize capturing excess data by not flying over the gaps in between the solar rows. This also makes the whole flight at lower altitudes a lot more efficient. With Hammer's solar inspection module, the drone's flight path can be automatically aligned with the solar rows, so you can use the row angle setting in Hammer Hub to plan a solar farm mission from your office and build efficiency into your workflows. By default, the setting is set to zero degrees, that is facing northeast, which is aligned to the solar panel rows, but you can always set it to a different direction if you wish to. In this part of the video, I'm going to look at another challenge. So this is essentially about keeping sun's glare away. Uh, so let's explore that in a bit more detail. High levels of solar irradiance, that is a sunny day, are good. Sun highlights how def defective components differ from normal ones. A proper functioning module converts the solar energy into electricity, whereas a malfunctioning module generates heat. The sun, however, brings glare. Glare will cause your images to look white because the panels will reflect the sunlight directly into your camera, and this is no good for drone operations. The best time to fly is actually early in the morning or late in the afternoon to avoid this problem altogether. Another way to solve this problem is to fly the drone throughout the mission with a preset orientation based on the location of the sun in the sky. You can do this with Hammer Mission's solar inspection module or any other flight planning software of your choice, which allows you to preset the drone orientation for the entire flight. So by flying at the right time of the day and using a, cre and using a constant preset orientation, you will have all the tools you need to avoid glare and collect the best data possible. Great, so far we've explored choosing the right altitude and GSD, aligning the drone with solar panels and how to keep the sun's glare away. And now we'll look at matching the gimbal pitch of the panels. 
Since most solar panels are pitched from the ground up, it makes sense to survey them with equal camera pitches. As a result, the cam captured images will have a nadir view of the panels and no cells observed. The pitch of the camera can therefore be changed in the flight software by setting a gimbal tilt or pitch setting. Normally this is set to negative 90 degrees for mapping missions, however you can adjust this depending on the pitch of the panels. The best way to determine that your tilt settings are correct is to manually fly the drone in front of a sample solar panel and then adjust the camera tilt or the gimbal pitch until it's perfectly aligned with the pitch of the solar panels. Lastly, another common issue with new solar farm sites is that you may not be able to find the sites on Google Maps or other mapping service used by a mission planning software. This means that unless you have an accurate KML file with the coordinates of the farm site handy, you won't really be able to figure out where the solar site's boundary is on the map. A tip for you, if calculated incorrectly, this can lead to missing areas or overflowing areas of the site and therefore waste precious drone battery life. Using a drone to manually create the site boundary is one solution to this problem. In Hammer Missions, we've added a feature called Fly to Draw, and this simplifies this process. Hammer allows you to fly the drone manually to key points of the polygon, tap the drone icon on the map or the C2 button of the remote controller, and then Hammer will automatically get the drone's current position into the, into the mission that you're currently building. As a result, you'll be able to input the site's boundary quickly and efficiently so that you can begin the solar survey as soon as possible. So in this video, we looked at five things to keep in mind for your next solar farm inspection with a drone. If you have any questions, do leave a comment below. If you're interested to try out Solar Inspections Modular and Hammer, you can sign up below and get a 14-day free trial. Thanks so much for watching and if you've got value out of this video, please do hit the like, subscribe button, share it with others and check out some of our more video content on different types of missions you can fly using Hammer. And we'll see you next time in the next video.